a video to review water potential. One of the very confusing things in AP biology and a lot of biology. To start with, you need to understand that water always moves from an area of high potential to low potential. With diffusion and indeed osmosis, a lot of times we talk about concentration, right? High concentration to low concentration. That's not necessarily true in this case, okay? Water potential is basically where will water move, okay? And this is like high concentration to low concentration, but there are a certain number of cases where this may not be true. First thing you need to understand is that water potential is actually equal to solute potential plus pressure potential. Solute potential is the amount of stuff in the cell or whatever we're talking about. Okay, usually in a cell. Okay, so, uh, or in a plant or whatever. Okay, we talk about water potential, we talk about water movement in plants and in and out of cells. Pressure potential is the outside pressure on the system. Okay, and to give you a quick example of that, if we had a box, a concrete box filled with water, and we tried to put water into it with a hose, no matter how much water we try to force in there, it's not going to go if the box is full. Why? Because the pressure of the concrete box is greater than the pressure of the water coming in. Okay, so the pressure potential is too hot. Now, in many cases, we're talking about open systems where the pressure potential is zero. Pressure potential is zero. Okay? So, for example, in a beaker with a cell in it, the pressure potential is zero. Okay? However, in a plant cell with a cell wall, there's a pressure potential. There's the pressure of the cell wall pushing in. So, anyway some terms that go with this. There are three terms that go when we talk about water potential. We use the word hypertonic. Hyper means more. Tonic is the stuff inside or wherever, and I'll show you a couple examples of this. Isotonic means the same. So we have the same concentration of stuff on either side of a membrane. Hypotonic means less stuff one side of a membrane than the other. And uh, the best way to show you hypertonic, hypotonic, is to show you a couple of examples. So for example, a cell placed in a hypertonic environment. So a blood cell, okay, it's a beaker, we place a blood cell in the beaker, and in the beaker is a hypertonic environment. It has lots of salt in the water. And so in a, on this little YouTube clip here, forgive me while I race, if you watch the YouTube clip, you'll watch what happens to these cells here. These cells, the membrane actually starts to shrink. Okay, it's difficult to tell in the YouTube clip here, but the cells are actually shrinking. Why are they shrinking? Why are they getting smaller? You see the membrane is kind of crenellating, getting these little ripply things in them. Why are they shrinking? Well, you know from you know from this idea that if a cell is placed, that water would be moving from a higher concentration here to a lower concentration here. This is hypertonic compared to the cell. Now, if we look at a cell that's placed in a, a blood cell placed in a hypotonic environment such as a, blood, a, a red blood cell placed in distilled water. Okay, watch what happens to these cells. They disappear. Where are they going? Well, when we place a red blood cell, which has stuff in it, into a hypotonic environment, I'm going to make the blood cell a little bigger here. Red blood cell has things in it, right? So, not a nucleus, by the way. So, as, as it's placed into a 100% distilled water environment, hypotonic, 
water is going to leave the cell. I'm sorry, I wrote that totally wrong. Water is going to enter the cell. Water is going to enter the cell until it bursts because the cell membrane does, can't put enough pressure on it so the cells all explode. So how is a plant cell different? Well, if we look at this animation here on, this, uh, on the Pearson Lab Bench Activity website, and we see that, okay, this plant cell is placed into a solution of distilled water. Again, a very hypophotonic environment. Water is going to be going into the cell, except eventually water is going to stop going into the cell even though it's a hundred percent water out here and less than a hundred percent inside water will eventually stop going in why because the cell wall will put so much pressure on it that it can't okay this is why we talk about water potential So your teacher or uh, maybe a textbook or something would ask you to do problems with water potential. And in AP class, you're provided with a formula on the formula sheet that says water potential. Water potential is written uh, this way, a fun way to use Greek letters. Okay, Water potential is equal to the pressure potential plus the solute potential. Pressure potential, remember, in an open system, in an open system, is zero. So if we take a look at this, we're going to take a look at a typical problem of pressure potential using our uh, typical cell that we use in AP Biology. We put uh, sucrose inside of a dialysis bag. And we put it in 100% water. Okay? So that's 0.1 molar sucrose, let's say, in 100% water. Well, our formula then states that the water potential is zero plus the solute potential. And we want to know the water potential of the bag. What is the water potential of this cell? Well, what we have to know first then, and I'm going to put all this up here, and the left-hand side will be confusing until you look at the right and I explain it. The formula for solute potential is negative I CRT. And you see that on your cheat sheet. Negative I CRT. Negative I is called the ionization constant. And for sucrose, it's 1.0. For something else, for another um, chemical, it would be something different. Uh, but for, and we don't need to get into the biochemistry of that. C is the molarity. Well, in this case, it's 0.1 is the molarity. R is a rate constant. Uh, and we're just going to we use the same number every time. And I'll come back to that. And then T is the temperature in degrees Kelvin. Now, for the purposes of our uh, example here, I'm going to eliminate all um, units. Okay, which isn't, I guess, proper, but for right now, we're going to eliminate units. Your teacher can go over units with you if you get there. So solute potential is what we have to figure out, right? Because the pressure potential is zero. So basically, this equals those two are equivalent. So we have negative 1 times 0.1. Negative 1 is the ionization constant right here, over here. C is 0.1. 0 0.0831 is R, our constant every time, and 295 is the temperature in Kelvin. We're going to assume that the temperature then was 22 degrees Celsius, and we have to add 273 to get to Kelvin. So we do that, and we get 295. On our handy-dandy calculator, we get that the solute potential is negative 2.45. I rounded to the nearest uh, tenth. I'm sorry, hundredth. So pressure potential or water potential equals zero plus negative 2.45, which means that water potential equals negative 2.45.
So if we look back at our lab, we want it, we could check our results, right? Because we can see, okay, if this is true, what's the water potential of this beaker? Well, I'm sorry, the water potential of this beaker, it's open to the air, so its pressure potential is zero, and there's nothing in it but water, so the solute potential is zero. So the water potential of this beaker should be zero. And you're like, well, wait a minute. This bag got bigger. That means water went in. Correct. Water goes from high potential to low. And if the bag is zero, and I'm sorry, if the, if the beaker is zero and the bag is negative 2.45, negative 2.45 is less than zero. Therefore, water goes from high potential to low. And there is a discussion of water potential and an example.